hang around. I want to I want to thank Occupy Ashland, John Stern. I want to thank Representative Peter Buckley for coming today, and uh, some of the remarks I have to say. Uh, I just want to say they, they're directed at government, as and 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 we need more people like Peter Buckley to come as part of the government to hear what Occupy Ashland has to say. So thank you for coming. Well, I'm here as part of Amnesty International, our Southern Oregon chapter. Steve Jensen and I started this chapter just this summer. Amnesty International is proud and honored to be here with Occupy Ashland on International Human Rights Day. The day in 1948, just after World War II, when every country in the United Nations adopted this Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Occupy Ashland and Amnesty International share a common belief. Governments and corporations exist to serve the people, not the other way around. Both Occupy Ashland and Amnesty International have similar beginnings. They both started when people began speaking out loud and clear to tell governments they erred when they began shifting from serving people to serving the people up, like a meal, a piece of meat, where 100 people come to dinner but only one eats, the other 99 are eaten. So here's a very short story of inspiration and hope. Fifty years ago, a lawyer in London, Peter Benenson, was on his way to work reading the newspaper. He read of two students in Portugal who'd raised their glasses in a public space like this, raised their glasses to toast freedom. And the dictator, Salazar, learned of that. He viewed it as a snub correctly, and he imprisoned them for it. Benenson was so outraged that he wrote to the newspaper, informing everyone that he could that he was writing to this and other dictators to release these prisoners of conscience, people who were in prison for speaking their minds. He invited anyone who was willing to join him. And so many people began writing that dictators began releasing these otherwise forgotten prisoners. And Amnesty International was born. Since that day, 50 years ago, Amnesty's simple, direct, and clear letter-writing campaigns have helped release over 40,000 prisoners of conscience, an astonishing number. So our voices make a difference. And that, that organization that began on December 10th, 50 years ago, has grown a few months ago, would have, we would have said, to the largest non-governmental human rights organization in the world with three million strong, but I think I, we have to correct that because this Occupy movement has gone worldwide, obviously. And if this isn't grassroots, uh, what is? So maybe, the, so maybe Amnesty has to take second fiddle to the largest human rights non-governmental organization in the world. But in any case, these letters have helped Amnesty earn the United Nations highest human rights prize and has helped us earn the Nobel Peace Prize. So today, Amnesty International, like Occupy Ashland, continues to speak out wherever governments are trampling the people's rights enumerated in this great Universal Declaration of Human Rights document. And every year on December 10th, Amnesty invites people like you to act, to write a letter to government officials who have the power to release their prisoners of conscience, people it has imprisoned for speaking out, people it has, it has stopped serving and has begun serving up. Today we ask you to take this simple act for human rights. Join us and write a letter. We have a table right over here. We have all the materials, all the information. Some of you have already begun writing. Before you leave today, please go to that table. Please stand up for someone a government has knocked down. Remind these governments that they exist to serve the people and not to serve them up. We are not alone. Thank you very much. Thank you.